Let us pray. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. Amen. Today, in what may be the only occurrence of its type in history, because we are exclusively online, this stewardship homily will include some great moments from the last several stewardship homilies. Hello, I'm Darren Williams. Karen Wright and I co-chair the Vestry Stewardship Commission. I'd like to take a moment to thank this year's Stewardship Committee for all that they have done. Ted Burkhalter, Lula Carpenter, Elizabeth Hatting, Nadal Gibran, and Pete Kirkham. There were some ideas we kicked around that we knew would never be our stewardship message. So try these. Stop, drop, and give. The four T's of giving, time, talent, treasure, and tax deduction. <laughs> Stewardship, just give it up. <laughs> Finding Jesus while losing all your marbles. <laughs> Keep calm and give alms. And finally, give till the Nats win the World Series. <laughs> okay, so obviously that's a little dated as the Nats, for only another week or two, are the reigning World Series champions, but they are the reigning World Series champion. It also doesn't mean that you are off the hook because I'm personally extending the conditions to be until the Nationals win the World Series again and the Washington football team wins the Super Bowl. Yeah, that ought to keep us giving faithfully for at least another decade or two. So our stewardship theme this year, One Together, centers on the opening words from our Holy Baptism Liturgy which I began this talk with, and it is the centerpiece of our existence together. Our holy baptism symbolizes purification or regeneration and admission to the Christian church, and it is considered a sacrament, that is, a ceremony imparting divine grace. I believe a stewardship homily based on divine grace is bound to move all of our spirits to discern favorably upon the needed time talent, and treasure here at St. Andrews, and it's sure to help us make our stewardship goal this year. So I will yield my remaining time back to Father Will, and thank you for listening. Okay, not so fast. You know, I truly wish it were that simple for us to have enough treasure to do any mission or ministry that we wanted, and to help those in our community who need help to pay those who do the incredible day-to-day -day work of our parish, and to keep these lights on, all while maintaining and improving our spiritual home's physical plant. It's not a given that you will pledge your hard-earned treasure to St. Andrews, particularly now. The reality is our world is pretty upside down, and we have hardships that no one could have imagined just eight or nine months ago. There is sickness and pain. There is violence and divide. There is need unfulfilled, and there is what seems like an endless road in front of us. Okay, not so fast here either. Where there is sickness and pain, we must comfort. Where there is violence and divide, we must be united. Where there is need, we must give. And where there is an endless road, we must offer light and eternal life. That is the church, and that is us here at St. Andrews, one together. We've always been these things, and it is up to us to find a way in the best and the worst of times to fulfill these roles. In my mind, the story is not one of defeat or disunity. In fact, it is quite the opposite. We've taken everything that's been thrown at us, everything. We had a void in our spiritual leadership. Our lay leader, Senior Warden John Jascott, passed away suddenly in early March. The COVID-19 pandemic shut us down and brought untold destruction to our health, to our economy, and our overall way of life. That should have been the end of the story. We should have disintegrated, slowly falling into disarray. We should have been lights out, no services, disengaged, and drifting apart. We should have been. However, our Lord and Savior had very different ideas for us. 
He delivered a soon-to-be-ordained seminarian who led us with endless enthusiasm, great compassion, and a think-outside-the-box mentality. God also delivered the ability to view and participate in online worship and fellowship wherever and whenever we want, thanks to willing lay readers, musicians, staff, congregation, and yes, technology. He delivered comfort, unity, charity, and made us as whole as we possibly could be. We were not left barren and we were not left alone. We are looking for life that welcomes all of us into the center of God's garden, where even the worst in us and the saddest parts of us and the most fearful and fraught corners of our consciousness can be healed and nourished and restored. We are looking for life that does not safely carry us away from the world, but forms us into life dealing people, into gardeners ourselves, into the body of the risen one. He delivered an interim rector who took us outside and reminded us of God's beauty, who also thoughtfully shepherded us into some difficult personal and societal conversations, reminding us that all are equal and all are welcome to come as we are. That is a message that I will not soon forget. I know from years of experience that invitations to churches often raise questions. Do invitations to a church come from inviting churches, churches that really mean it? That is to say, would I feel comfortable there? And sometimes to find the answer, the question is asked this way, well, what should I wear? Or to put it another way, how can I fit in? And how broad is the welcome and how inclusive? The responses sometimes come as you are. And finally, in the middle of a pandemic, the most difficult time to do a job, let alone take on a new one, he delivered a priest in charge and his beautiful family to us. To me, this new priest in charge is like the budding new life one sees spring forth after a forest fire has scorched the earth. It is the sign of hope, renewal, and faith restored in us and by us, one together. In a time in which we could have been crushed and faithless, instead he gave us the greatest gift of all, hope. My mother Betty recently had to have not one but two surgeries, the second one quite unexpected. She has been on the parish prayer list and I give thanks to all of you for the prayers headed her direction. It has helped immensely. So, during that time, I've spent several weekends in her company, assisting her with her recovery. It's what families do and not really the point of my story. Here is the point. My mom absolutely loves home and garden TV renovation shows. So I sat there and I watched with her for about five episodes in a row, rolling my eyes through each one. Then on came an episode where a man restored his son's house after the son had had a car accident that left him paralyzed. His son didn't have the means with which to do this himself, so the father found a way to pay for the fairly sizable price tag that comes with converting an older house into the space that his son needed. It was moving, and it was poignant. I think you can make the leap from this brief story to what we have here at St. Andrews. We have an amazing space here, one that we will begin regathering in sooner rather than later. It works. It is stunning, it is functional, and it is aging. It is all of these things. Well, in the Home and Garden episode, what was old needed to change to fit the surroundings and circumstances and needed to be updated to work in a way that is safe, supportive to our needs, and functioning properly. Sound familiar? Like maybe your favorite house of worship, your spiritual home here at St. Andrews? Here in the U.S. and in Northern Virginia, and especially at St. Andrews, we are blessed with full and rewarding lives, material abundance, and spiritual opportunities beyond compare. In return, and as members of the church, we are invited by Christ to practice sacrificial giving. 
not by sacrificing our lives on a cross as he did, but by giving abundantly of our gifts of time, talent, and treasure so that the church, especially St. Andrews, might fulfill its mission. Well, there's a lot to keeping a church running and it is not ideal to run a parish our size without proper staffing. There may always be the thought, gee, I wish we had, with respect to our building and our staff. But we can and must do better in this department to deliver what we want from St. Andrew's ministries and missions to all who need it, which include ourselves. We need an associate to assist our priest in charge and poss possibly a pastoral care assistant down the line. These are being addressed by Father Will in our capable vestry, but these positions that need to fit into our budget and they need to be funded by our pledges. So please prayerfully consider this before you pledge. There are other well-known staffing needs and facility needs which we will continue to address like a seven year, $1 million mortgage but I believe that God, through you, will deliver the wherewithal to make these things possible even now. I like to talk about the good things we do, and we are still doing them, or figuring out how to get back to doing them right now. Last year, January, Layman Wood offered up a powerful parallel between the amazing Yellowstone Park, where her family had recently vacationed, and St. Andrews. I think our church home, St. Andrews, is a lot like Yellowstone. Any one of us here could have chosen somewhere else, another congregation, another church, maybe even one closer to our own home, and we would have made special memories there. But serendipity brought us all to St. Andrews and has allowed us to see its beauty in its people, its spirituality, and its welcoming nature in times of joy and in times of sadness, and yes, in times like these of uncertainty and change. Pete Kirkham, I think, quantifies the impacts of families and outreach as a sign of our vibrancy here at St. Andrews, to which I believe we can easily return to upon regathering. You can always tell whether a church has a future by looking to see how many kids are around. We're almost overrun with kids. And we do a lot to help them learn about Jesus and our salvation. You ever stop to think about how many ways we reach out to children and young adults here at St. Andrews? We have a preschool during the week, Sunday school, godly play, journey to adulthood, work camp, and more. It's truly fantastic. A child and a father were walking along the road when they came to a large stone, and the child said to the father, do you think if I use all my strength, I can move this rock? And the father answered, if you use all your strength, I'm sure you can do it. So the child began to push the rock and exerted tons of energy and pushed and pushed and as hard as the child could. The rock did not budge. Discouraged, the child said to the father, you were wrong, dad, I can't do it. The father placed an arm around the child and said, no, I don't think you did use all your strength. You didn't ask me for help. If you didn't make the analogy, we are the child and God is the father. So we all absolutely in our heart of hearts know this story. It's our story. It is impressive in the best of times to which we shall return triumphantly. Let's begin with our youth. We have a fully functioning preschool operating safely right now thanks due to our incredible staff led by preschool director Tammy Phillips. That same preschool through Food for Friends packed almost 10,000 backpacks for food insecure students through Bonnie Bray Elementary School last year. We've had two Eagle Scouts per year on average perform projects and be awarded the honor through St. Andrews. That is impressive. Our family ministries under the guidance of Amy Dutton through Easter Vigil, Parents Night Out, Messy Church, Parents and Littles, Family Movie Nights, Vacation Bible School, Mission Friends, and other events serve approximately 500 of our youth annually. Our nursery, Sunday School, Learning Center, and youth groups also serve hundreds of our parishioners every year. Fellowship connects us and grows us 
through our relationships. Every year through men's and women's fellowship, foyer groups, coffee hours, receptions, and parish-wide events like Shrine Month, Oktoberfest, Epiphany Celebration, and our annual parish picnic. Music under the guidance of our Director of Music, Aaron Gowen, touches lives through our regular services, our adult and youth choirs, Friends of the Music and Arts, and our contemporary and Teze services. One of our biggest strengths is our outreach. Even now, during the pandemic shutdown, we care for those in need through programs like ECHO. We donate hundreds of bags of needed items, help families celebrate Thanksgiving and Christmas where there would be little or none, all through hundreds of volunteer hours and thousands of dollars in support to ECHO by us. FATSIS provides emergency shelter, food, and medical needs. Almost 2,000 meals were supplied last year by St. Andrews, and we have continued that level of giving through the COVID crisis. Here again, we have also provided hundreds of volunteer hours and thousands of dollars in assistance to those in need through facets. Hypothermia Prevention Week in 2019 provided more than 150 homeless guests safe shelter, warmth, and good food, with St. Andrews providing over 1,000 hours in volunteer work. ESOL, or English for Speakers of Other Languages, Samaritan Ministries, Work Camp, Crop Walk, Team Believe, raising funds for cancer research, El Hogar Ministries in El Salvador, and American Friends of the Episcopal Diocese of Jerusalem are all touched by our generous outreach spirit, translating to thousands of dollars and generous hours of volunteer spirit provided by us here at St. Andrews. And finally, the good work of our worship commission through lay readers, ushers, acolytes, greeters, altar guild, flower guild, and prayer guild serve some 15,000 annual attendees of our services, embodied by 1,500 of our congregants here at St. Andrews. Their work is evident every Sunday during normal times, and even now, many are finding ways to serve. I'll end there and I'll move to the ask, hoping to have made our case for your annual pledge. Don't give until it hurts, give until it feels good. And I really truly mean that. And I hope uh, all of you take that to heart. You know, the Bible says God loves a happy giver. We have a lot to be happy for here at church. So we really need to think about and give back. And don't think when you're writing your check, don't think about the sacrifices you have to make to keep to increase your pledge. But think about all the positive impact that your money's doing. Think about providing nourishment for the hungry children or providing shelter for the homeless. Think about all those positive things. And really, once you get into that mindset that when you are writing that check and you're feeling good about it, that, that's the place you, you really need to be. In closing, I offer you this parable, indicative of our efforts in the most trying of circumstances. A man stood before God, his heart breaking from the pain and injustice in the world. Dear God, he cried out, look at all the suffering and the anguish and distress in the world. Why don't you send help? God responded simply and elegantly, I did send help. I sent you. So quite simply put, the you in this parable is obviously us here at St. Andrews one together. Us, giving not until it hurts, but until it feels good. Us, perhaps, not always getting what we want, but finding out sometimes we just might get what we need. Us, riding out this storm together. Us, planning for our future together. Us, extending the hand where needed, together. One together. Amen.